Okay. <clears throat> to begin, uh, starting off with his first claim that uh, one of the major uh, negatives of the death penalty is that it is um, extremely expensive uh, compared to keeping them uh, alive with life without parole or just imprisonment in general. Um, so to begin, a, um, according to a lecture by Dudley Sharp uh, called Death Penalty and Ascendancing Information, uh, he quotes that the Justice for All uh, estimates that life without parole cases will cost approximately 1.2 million to 3.6 million more than equivalent death penalty cases. Um, and additionally going off of that, um, uh, according to uh, Bob Evnen in his uh, thoughts about the death penalty in uh, 2016, um, much of these costs attributed to the death penalty are these years of appeal processes. So basically what's going on is these main proponents of the death penalty who are arguing against it uh, keep going in for retrials and that is what's uh, attributing to so much of the cost. Uh, you have lawyers that are being paid significant amounts to uh, be arguing against these people and they are continuing to pay significant amount. Uh, along with this, uh, it is true that the cost per year for um, life without parole versus death penalty is cheaper, approximately 34000 to 70000 However, uh, the time you are in jail under death row is extremely more significant than if you were in jail uh, under life without parole, and in the end it adds up to approximately 1.2 to 3.6 million uh, more on average. Um, <clears throat> moving on to his second claim that uh, you have the possibility of harming innocent people and executing them. Um, so uh, to begin with that, um, according to uh, Michelle Hannessy in her uh, uh, article, Justice Requires a, S a Swift Death Penalty in California, um, those who are in support of abolishing the death penalty, uh, they point to an in uh, the possibility of an innocent person being executed. However, uh, this innocent person should be able to take solace in the fact, knowing that you have a unanimous jury, you need a unanimous jury of 12 citizens that must render the death verdict. And uh, this is an exhaustive trial. It, it, it does not go as fast as a normal trial. Uh, you have two very highly competent attorneys that are overseen by an independent judge, and they will ensure a fair trial. <clears throat> Additionally, uh, he pointed out that uh, in Illinois, uh, in the year 2000, uh, there was uh, 25 people on death row in which 13 of them were freed due to uh, they were seen as innocent. However, uh, what he failed to mention was that out of those 13 that were claimed innocent, five were acquitted on retrials, which essentially means that uh, they weren't necessarily innocent, but they were not proven guilty beyond all reasonable doubt, which is what is necessary. And um, uh, along with that, uh, in the other eight cases, prosecutors dismissed charges without a retrial because of evidence problems. And this goes on with the uh, years of appeal processes that are happening, whether it be uh, mishandling or just technology uh, advances. And so only one of those 13 had only been clearly established as innocent. Um, and uh, additionally, it's kind of a misrepresented number because while yes, there was 25 who were on death row of that year, there was 247 death sentenced in Illinois, not just 25. And it was only of those few that were actually uh, realized uh, only the one that was realized he was fully uh, innocent. <clears throat> Again, uh, according to uh, Antonin Scalia, uh, Supreme Court Justice, uh, in his case, in the case Kansas v. Michael E. Marsh, uh, he made the statement that um, the reversal of an erroneous conviction on appeal or on habeas of the pardoning of an innocent condemning through executive clemency demonstrates not the failure of the system, but its success. Uh, those devices are part and parcel of the multiple assurances that are applied before a death sentence is carried out. So essentially, um, by finding the innocence in someone, it is the system doing its job correctly. <clears throat> uh, moving on to his third claim that, uh, that it's unfair because it has unfair treatment of minorities. Um, so in a, in a, according to Edward Koch, in his uh, statistics show death penalty, not racism, um, the racial breakdown for those sentenced to death since 1977, uh, keep in mind this was a 2011 study, so in a span of about 35 years, 48.6% 48 48 uh, were white and 40.9% were black, 8.9% Hispanic and 1.6% other. Um, and that, those are just the people who were on death row, um, going to the people who were actually executed since 1976. 56% of those were white, 35% black, 7% Hispanic and 2% were other. <clears throat> and however, uh, while yes, that already proves that it is not um, uh, uh, targeting minorities, uh, um, the, the data according to John McAdams in his uh, Racial Disparity in the United States uh, shows that 48% uh, of murder victims are um, black and 
Uh, it shows that the vast majority of murders are intraracial and not interracial. So they're, the fact that they're getting onto death penalty is not due to racism. It's, it's race on race, um, uh, intraracial crime. And um, uh, among murders involving black and white persons, 90% uh, involving a white killing a white or a uh, black killing a black. Uh, <clears throat> uh, additionally, uh, according to Gary Kleck in his uh, rape, uh, article, Racial Discrimination in Criminal Sentencing, so um, uh, white murderers, no matter who they kill, are more likely to get the death penalty than uh, African American murderers with a, approximately 11% to 7.3%. <clears throat> And according to the uh, Bureau of Justice Statistics in uh, 1995, um, people of the white descent are executed 15 months quicker than those of African American descent. Um, and additionally, according to the Bureau of Justice Statistics, um, a person's under sentence of death since, uh, I'm sorry, a person's sentence under the death, uh, 1,730 were white, where uh, 1,200 were black in total. <clears throat> And uh, along with that, according to the Bureau of Justice Statistics as well, uh, in 1995, 56 men were executed, 33 of which were white, 22 were black, and one was Asian. Um, and going on to his last point, uh, he stated that there are approximately 20,000 20, homicides per year, and in the 365-day process, that is about 55 a day who are not executed. Um, however, in, by, from David um, Rulhaus in, in his uh, article, Capital Punishment Works, um, we found that he found that uh, researchers of data from more than 3,000 countries from, 19, nine, from 1977 through 1996, which is approximately 20 years, found that on average uh, executions resulted in 18 fewer murders per country. So while yes, you may be if you're executing less people, more people, less people are dying, but through the execution, you're ultimately saving more lives in the end. Thank you.